Oh hey, didn't see you guys there. I guess this is my sign to make coffee despite it being four o'clock on a Monday. But we've all been there. And with that, I think I'm gonna use this as a perfect opportunity to talk about this guy right here. Which you're probably wondering, who the heck is this old looking dude who looks like he died 100 years ago? I'm gonna tell you all about him, but first I'm gonna get my water because it's a very important role in the coffee making process. Okay, so who is this old looking dude? Well, this is Rembrandt. Now, Rembrandt was born in 1609 and then eventually later died in 1669. He was a Dutch Golden Age painter and printmaker. Now, a lot of uh, the Dutch Golden Age was characterized by a lot of uh, everyday subjects, which was influenced a lot by the Renaissance era, which Rembrandt himself took a lot of inspiration from. He took a lot of inspiration from this guy, whose name I don't know how to pronounce, and this guy, whose name I also don't know how to pronounce. But, nonetheless, he took inspiration from both these guys, who were both artists during the Renaissance era. Now, Rembrandt himself was considered to be one of the greatest painters of all time, which is a pretty good title to hold. A very good title, nonetheless. But Rembrandt, he did a lot of self-portraits, a lot of uh, portraits of other people, as well as some other paintings. Um, but one key thing that sticks out in a lot of his work is his use of light. Now, if you look at any of Rembrandt's paintings, self-portraits, anything like that, you'll notice a triangle of light on his subject's face, either on the left side or right side of their face. And it creates a really natural look to that subject. And in that sense, I would argue that Rembrandt himself, without knowing it, helps influence modern day cinema as well as modern day photography, more specifically portrait photography. And I'm gonna talk about why. But first, I need to grind my beans up. Now when you look at Rembrandt's work, the triangle of light seems very natural, and that's because it is. Now Rembrandt was the first artist to use this type of lighting that he created in his work, which eventually later on, at the very beginning of the film days, the early, early days of cinema, a filmmaker by the name of Cecile, a director, um, this guy right here, uh, in 1915, he was making a movie called The Warrens of Virginia. And in that movie, in that film, he used uh, very similar lighting techniques. How he would light his subjects would be using artificial lights in a lot of cases to create the triangle of light on his subject's face, which created a lot of, you know, naturality to it because it creates a very natural look to your subject's face. Now eventually later on he would coin this technique which is known today as Rembrandt lighting. And that's kind of where it officially began. Now Rembrandt himself started to use this in his work as an artist, as a painter during the you know 17th century, during the Dutch Golden Age, inspired by a lot of Renaissance artists by using this technique to create natural looks to his subject's face and then later on in the 20th century, a filmmaker started to use that in, you know, the cinema world, which we use nowadays. And this technique is also used in photography as well. Now, primarily portrait photography, you know, with models' faces, subjects' faces, whether that be in the studio or just out in the world. Yes, my ice is in a bowl. We're not going to talk about it. It's a whole new bowl that'll fit my fruit. You didn't see that. Good thing is I got literally the perfect amount of ice in here. 
I'm gonna forget to clean my weapon when I'm gonna walk to the bathroom later on today and my socks are gonna get wet and be like, motherfucker. And then I realize I forgot to pick those ice cubes up off the floor. You just hate when that happens when you're walking somewhere and your socks get wet. So this type of lighting has been used since the early days of cinema. Since it was coined Rembrandt lighting by this filmmaker. Now, if you were to look at any film or any TV show or even just look at a photo on Instagram, pay, I would encourage you to pay attention to the side of that subject's face. And you'll notice oftentimes that you'll, you'll see a little triangle of light on the side of a subject's face. Now, because it's so natural and because most people aren't looking for it, it just blends in very nicely. Again, creating a very natural look because that's what this type of lighting is supposed to do, create a natural look on the subject's face, which is why it's very favored and why a lot of filmmakers and photographers use it, because it's very natural. And it creates a lot of contrast on a subject's face. So a lot of the times you'll see this lighting especially used in some sort of moodier scene or something with high contrast lighting, some sort of scenario along the lines of that where you'll see the triangle of light very clearly on one side of that face and then you'll see darker shadows on the other side of the subject's face, which also plays a huge part into the mood of the scene as well. Obviously you don't need a high contrast moody scene to, you know, use Rembrandt lighting. Again, Rembrandt lighting can even occur naturally in nature itself. Take a look at these two photographs. Both these images were photographs that I took myself. Now I didn't use any other lighting other than natural lighting taken at around golden hour, which is about the hour before the sun goes down. So a lot of the times in my work, I like to backlight my subjects. So in that sense, I place my subject where the light is behind them. And then in this particular photograph, there's a wall off to the side on the left of the photograph. And then of course you have that pillar there, which helps reflect the light um, back onto the subject's face creating that triangle of light. Now again, there were no reflectors, there were no artificial lights, this is all natural lighting used to create such a look on my subject's face. In that sense, you don't need artificial light. Because of the, the naturality of this type of lighting, you don't need reflectors, you don't need artificial lights to create this type of lighting. I think that's why it's very favored and why it's considered very natural and why artists like Rembrandt himself use this type of lighting because not only does it create contrast on the subject's face, but it makes them appear more lifelike and just in a, a more natural format. Format? Form. Of the sorts. We are slowly but surely getting there. Now it's just a waiting game until it finishes. In that sense, this is why I would argue that Rembrandt himself, without knowing it of course, helped influence modern day cinema and photography as well. Like I said, I would definitely encourage all of you to take a look next time you're watching a movie or TV show or scrolling through Instagram to take a look at the lighting on a subject's face and, note it, and try to see if you notice a triangle of light. Now, of course, this isn't the only type of lighting that exists out there. There are plenty of other different types of lighting that exist for you know, various reasons. Obviously, it depends on the type of look that you're going for, but Rembrandt lighting is a very cinematic version of lighting, one that is used a lot in the film industry these days, dating back to, again, 1915, when it was originally coined as Rembrandt lighting. Can you smell the aromas through the lens? That's the shit. Yep. I think you've gotten all you need to know about this old looking guy. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, but, but you've definitely gotten a little bit more of an insight into 
you know, lighting in the modern day and age in cinema and photography and kind of where that originally came from. I am going to enjoy this cup of coffee. With that, thank you much for watching and I hope you definitely learned something new about Rembrandt and a little bit more about his style of painting and the 17th century cinema photography. I'm talking too much. Thank you very much for watching. Peace.